Jesus spoke of the temple of his body, but he did not explain, for he did not mean for them to understand. Jesus and his disciples left Jerusalem and went back north to Nazareth, Jesus' hometown. Oh, Jesus, you have come home. Bring all your friends and we will prepare them a good meal. Mother, we will be here only a short time, through the Sabbath. As was his custom, Jesus went into the synagogue, the Jewish place of religious worship, on the Sabbath. We are so glad to see one of our own return with his friends. We have been hearing strange things of them. We would like to hear more of this later. But for now, Jesus, would you do us the honor of reading the scripture today? Jesus turned to the prophet Isaiah and found a well-known prophecy of Messiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to give sight back to the blind, to set free those that are bruised, and to preach that the time has now come for God to bring salvation to his people. Today, this prophecy is fulfilled. Blasphemy! You're a liar! Blasphemy! You're just a carpenter's son! Blasphemy! Just calm down! We are leaving! Stone him to death! He is claiming to be Messiah! Jesus and his disciples came to Capernaum, a city on the lake where some of his disciples lived. Again they entered into the synagogue. And the prophet said that Messiah would be a light unto the Gentiles, and in him they would trust. Happy is the man who is pure in his heart, for he shall see God. God does not cast off any who would come to him, whether he be Jew or Gentile. The Holy One, let us alone. I know who you are. You are the Holy One of God. He is possessed of devils. Get him out of here. Have you come to destroy us devils before our time? Let us alone. What have we got to do with you? Who let him in here? Look out! He looks dangerous! Devils, I command you to come out of this man and torment him no more! Be gone! Is he dead? Suddenly, he stood to his feet. Praise God! The devils are gone and you are free. Now go your way and sin no more. Jesus has complete authority over devils. The man is normal. Peter! Your wife says you should come home. Her mother is very sick with a high fever. We will come. Oh, Peter, my husband, I am so afraid. The fever grows worse. Don't be afraid. The master is here. <laughs> Arise, dear lady. Your sickness is gone. She is getting up. She is cured. She arose from her bed and ministered unto Jesus and his disciples. Word of the healing spread, and they brought many sick people to Jesus. Master, my father has been paralyzed since I was a little boy. A log fell on him and broke his back. Please, if you can, help. Arise and walk. Glory to God! I can walk. It's a miracle! Master, my daughter was born blind. 
can you help her? As the scripture says, the blind shall receive their sight. Your daughter now sees. Daddy, is that you? Oh, Daddy, I never knew what you looked like, but you are more handsome than I imagined. Jesus and his disciples went down to Jerusalem during the feast days, and Jesus taught in the temple. You have heard it said by them of old time that you should love your friends and hate your enemies. But I say unto you that you should love your enemies and do good unto them. When someone curses you, do not return the cursing, but rather pray that a blessing will come on them. Treat other people the way you would like to be treated if you were in their place. When men commit a trespass against you, you should forgive them. You will be blessed if you have a pure heart, for you will see God. If you make peace, you will be most blessed. What about the eye for an eye and the tooth for a tooth? If a man strikes you on one cheek, turn the other cheek so that he might strike it also. Do not be violent. If you see that your neighbor needs a coat, and you have two, then give him one. If he is hungry, feed him. Your heavenly Father will see and bless you for it. You have heard it said that you should not murder. But I say unto you, that if you are angry with your brother without just cause, you will be in danger of the judgment of God. You have heard it said that a man should not commit adultery. But I say unto you that if you so much as look upon a woman to lust after her, you have committed adultery with her already in your heart. On the outside they look good, but on the inside they are full of dead men's bones. If you are not more righteous than they are, you will never enter into my kingdom. There is a broad way that leads to destruction, and many are traveling it. I am the door to heaven. If you enter in through me, you will have eternal life. If you try to go any other way, you will die in your sins. Why do you heal on the seventh day? Moses commanded that we were to do no work on the Sabbath. My father sent me into the world to do his work. I do only those things that he tells me to do. You're making yourself equal to God. That's blasphemy, punishable by death. It is the Heavenly Father's will that all men should worship and honor the Son, just as they do the Father. There will come a time when those who are in the graves will hear my voice and arise from the dead, some to eternal life and some to eternal damnation. Truly this is the Messiah, first the miracles, and now he makes this so claim. He is different from the religious leaders. He speaks with authority. I'm afraid they will kill him. I must go and tell my wife. Master, there's a Pharisee here to see you. He is a ruler of Jews, a very important man. Why does he come at night? Is he embarrassed to be seen talking to Jesus? I will go and talk with him privately. Master, we rulers of the Jews know that you are a teacher come from God. 
for no man could do the miracles that you do except God be with him. Unless you are born again, you will not see the kingdom of God. Are you telling me that I should enter into my mother's womb and come out a second time? <laughs> no. The flesh gives birth to flesh, and the spirit gives birth to spirit. Nicodemus, hear what I tell you. You must be born again. How does this new birth come about? The spiritual birth of which I speak is mysterious like the wind, but we experience it just the same. You must have this birth from above if you are to enter into the kingdom of God. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must I be lifted up. But they were dying from snake bite because they had sinned against God. When they looked at the brass serpent, they were instantly healed. Yes, and even now all men are dying from the snake bite of sin. But this time I will be lifted up for all men to see. As those who were bitten in the wilderness were delivered by looking upon the brass serpent, those who are bitten by sin will find deliverance by the for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He who believes on me has everlasting life, but he who does not believe on me is already condemned. So you're saying that the new birth is the only cure for sin? and that you are going to be placed on a pole to provide deliverance. When will this new birth occur? After I've been lifted up for all men to see. The Samaritans lived between Jerusalem and Galilee. The Jews avoided all contact with Samaritans, not even passing through their cities, because they believed the Samaritans to be spiritually defiled. One day, Jesus surprised his disciples by saying, Come, I must go through Samaria. Lord, they are unclean, ignorant people. They are poor and immoral. It is the Father's will that I go to Samaria. About midday, they arrived at the well outside of the city. You go on into town and buy meat. I will wait here for you by the well. Are you going to stay here alone? Yes, I must do the work of my father. Jesus was tired, thirsty, and hungry. Though it was not the time of day for women to come to the well, a Samaritan woman came to draw water. Could you give me a drink of water from your pitcher? <laughs> Why do you, a Jewish man, ask for a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? I thought you Jews had nothing to do with us. If you knew the gift of God and who I am, you could ask me, and I would give you living water. You offer me water? You have nothing to draw with. And the well is deep. Where are you going to get living water? When you drink of this well, you thirst again. The water I offer you will be inside your soul as a spring of everlasting life. Then give me a drink of this living water so that I will never thirst again. Go and call your husband, and I will tell you of this water. I don't have any husband. You have had five husbands, but the man you are living with now is not your husband. Surely you are a prophet to know my secret sin. You choose worship in Jerusalem, and our fathers worship on this mountain. Which mountain is the correct place to worship? 
God is spirit. He is not worshipped in temples made with men's hands. God is seeking people that will believe the truth and worship him in spirit. We know that the Messiah is coming, and when he comes, he will reveal the truth to us. You are speaking to the Messiah. I must go to find my friends and tell them. Jesus stayed in Samaria for two days and taught the people the word of God. One time, Jesus and his disciples stood on a hillside overlooking the Lake of Galilee. Several thousand people came out of the cities to hear him teach. When you give money to the poor, do not do it in public places where others can see you. When you do religious things so that you can be praised and admired by other men, you will not be rewarded by God in heaven. So don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing. When you pray, don't be like the religious hypocrites who pray in public so that they will be seen of men. And when you pray, do not use repetitions like your religious leaders do. For they stand in public places and make a show of their devotion. Do not spend all your energy and time trying to get rich. Rich people have more trouble than anyone, and they love their riches so much that it is hard for them to enter into heaven. Don't lay up your treasures in this world. Lay up your treasure in heaven, where it will last forever. You cannot serve two masters, God and money. You will end up hating one and loving the other. Master, it is late in the day, and the people have been with us all day. They must be hungry, and it is far to any city where they could buy food. You must send them away now so they can go buy food. Master, you can have my lunch. My mother prepared for me five loaves and two small fish. Have everyone sit down and we will serve them. With what? Let's see, it looks like we are having fish and bread. But Master, that is not enough to feed one man, much less 5,000. Borrow 12 large baskets and prepare to distribute the food. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. What's he doing pouring that little lunch in that big basket? Look at that! Where did all that food come from? Praise God! He gives us bread from heaven! Just like he loves to My mother won't believe this! People took bread and fish from the baskets. The food just multiplied again and again. Master, everyone has eaten. And still the baskets are full. We cannot empty them. Gather up what is left, and then you and the others take a ship to the other side of the lake. I will see you later. I must go into the mountain to pray. Jesus went up into the mountain alone, and his disciples all got into a ship and left for the other side of the lake. Jesus often went alone into the wilderness to pray. After the disciples got out into the middle of the lake, a fierce storm came up, and they were afraid they were going to sink. I have never seen a storm this bad! We can't take much more of this! Ah! We are going to sink! Look! There's something up there on the water! It's a ghost! It's a ghost! It's a man! Whoa! 
walking on the water. Peter, it is I. Be not afraid. Lord, if that is you, then allow me to come to you walking on the water, just as you are doing. Come to me, Peter. I am coming, Lord. No, Peter! Peter was really walking on the water to Jesus. When Peter saw the big waves and lost sight of Jesus, he became afraid. Fear destroyed his faith, and he began to sink. Lord! Save me! Peter, he began to doubt me. Jesus brought Peter back to the boat. Both of them were still walking on the water. Peter, you walked on the water. Peace, be still. Jesus rebuked the storm and suddenly it was calm. Depart from me, O Lord, for I am a sinful man. Surely you are the Son of God, the Christ of Israel, my Lord and my God. These feast days are so crowded. There are people here from all over the country, some from as far away as Rome and Egypt. Let us go down by the pool. He has been here for as long as I can remember. Would you like to be made whole? I have no man to help me. Rise. Take up your bed and walk. You are Jesus, aren't you? I've heard of your miracles. What a cruel joke. The poor man has been lame for 38 years. This is our holy Sabbath. He's got no business disturbing our peace. I hear there's a movement to have him removed. He's getting far too much attention. Yeah, he has the people convinced that he can do miracles. Who does this Jesus think he is? The Messiah? His legs! They are growing! He's getting up! It's not possible! Praise be to God after all these years! Why do you heal on the Sabbath day? Moses commanded us to rest on the Sabbath day. It is acceptable on the Sabbath to pull your ox out of a pit. Am I breaking the law by healing a man on the Sabbath? My father works on the Sabbath and I simply do as I see him doing. He says God is his father. Blasphemy. He's making Blasphemy. himself to be equal to God. Hold him. He should be stoned Stone to death. Him. Stone him to death. Kill Stone him. him to death. Kill this man. Drive him from our temple. You would kill a man for healing on the Sabbath? He speaks against our law. He said nothing against the law. Listen to what he has to say. Hear me. You marvel because I do this one miracle. You will see many miracles greater than this. As my Father can resurrect those from the dead, he has given me that same authority. The Father has put me in complete authority over this world. If you do not honor me, 
not honor God. Truly I tell you, he that believes on me believes in him that sent me and will have everlasting life. How can you give everlasting life? There will come a time when the dead will hear my voice and come out of their graves. Those who have done good will be raised to eternal life, but those who have done evil will be cast into eternal damnation in the lake of fire. That's blasphemy. No man can raise the dead. Only God can give eternal life. You do not believe me, but John predicted my coming and so does the scripture. Search the scriptures, for many prophecies speak of me. Do not think that I will accuse you before God. The laws of Moses, which you have failed to keep, will be testimony against you. This is the one they're trying to kill. Yet he speaks boldly, and they do nothing. Do the rulers know that this is indeed the very Christ, the Messiah of Israel? The scribes teach that we won't know where the Messiah comes from. But we know that this man is the son of a carpenter from Galilee. You say you know me, and you know where I came from. I did not come to this earth by myself. My Father sent me, but you do not know my Father. But I know him, and he has sent me to you. How did he hear me? He knows all things. This is the Messiah that was predicted to come. expect the Messiah to do more miracles than this man has done. Go immediately and arrest the blasphemer. The people are believing on him. He must be silenced. It looks bad this time. Blessed are those who thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Love your enemies and bless them. If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. The Holy Spirit shall be in him as a well of water springing up unto eternal life. He doesn't talk like a criminal. They say he is the answer to 4,000 years of prophecy. Why have you not brought him to us? He was standing right in front of you. Why didn't you take him? No man ever spoke like this man. He speaks of love and forgiveness. Ha! He has deceived you also? Have any of the educated rulers and Pharisees believed on him? This Jesus should die. Nicodemus, the man who came to Jesus by night, spoke up. Does our law condemn any man before it has heard what he has to say? Nicodemus. Are you also one of his followers from Galilee? Search the scripture, for the Messiah does not come from Galilee. He is to come from Bethlehem of Judea, and he must be the son of David. He deceives the common people with his lies. He seems to have an answer for everything. Why don't we send one of the more brilliant lawyers to trip him up in his words? I know just the lawyer. He's brilliant and ruthless. The lawyer came to challenge Jesus. Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? 
What does the law say? It says that you should love the Lord with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind, and that you should love your neighbor as yourself. There is your answer. Love is the fulfilling of the law. If you love your neighbor as you do yourself, you will please God. Yes, but which neighbor? You don't mean everybody, even the heathen Romans? I will tell you a story. A man who was traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho was attacked by thieves, stripped of everything, and left for dead. When a priest passed by the man lying in the road, he walked around him and did not stop to help. Likewise, a Levite, a man chosen to serve in the temple, passed by and stopped just long enough to look at the wounded man, but he did not help. What good does it do to say you have love if you do not show works of love? If you do not love your neighbor, you do not love God. Then a Samaritan passed by that way, a man despised by the Jews and considered to be unclean. When he saw the wounded man stripped and lying in the road, he did not consider the fact that the man was a Jew. The Samaritan had compassion on him and stopped to help. The Samaritan cleaned and bound the wounds of the man. His love was not in words, but in deeds. The Samaritan then put the wounded man on his own donkey and took him to an inn where he could get rest and recover. Be easy now. I have you. You will soon be in a bed. I will pay you for two weeks of room and food. If his care cost more, I will pay you when I pass this way again. You asked me who was your neighbor. Tell me now, which of these three was a neighbor unto this man? He that showed mercy, of course. Awesome. Then you can go and do as the Samaritan. You can love your neighbor. The fool! Get him out of there before Jesus makes a convert out of him. What kind of crazy teaching is this? It's not practical. Some people just won't respond to love. You have heard it said that you should love your friends but hate your enemies. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you.